Twins raise top of the ninth inning. Jack's a strike away from getting out of it. And Randy Rosarena hit a very impressive home run into the top deck there. Jacks, man, uh, 2.92 ERA in the first half, 6.26 ERA so far in the second half now uh, with a big increase in his whip as well. Moving on to the bottom of the ninth inning, Willie Castro appears to get hit by a pitch to lead off the inning, but it's not called. Says it got him right in the hand. They replay, and, I mean, it looks like it barely got him, but they don't give it to him. Willie ends up popping out, unfortunately, instead of getting first base. But Jordan Luplo does a nice job. Uh, works a really good plate appearance and draws a walk here. So Colin Poche certainly not looking sharp in the early going. And the Twins pinch hit Christian Vasquez for Edward Julian. And to clear this up, they knew that Stevenson was coming in. We'll get to that in a second. But here's Edward Julian's splits throughout his entire career, basically. Uh, 2021, his first year, pretty even. He actually held his own very well against lefties. 2022 is when it really fell off for him. A uh, 210 average and a 276 slugging against lefties. Uh, still a fairly so- very solid on base percentage. And then this is his splits this year with the Twins. He actually hit very well against lefties in the minors, but very small sample. This is a small sample, too. 42 plate appearances, but a 452 OPS versus left handed hitting. So I can see that idea that actually Vasquez has hit righties better than Edward Julian has hit lefties, but I don't like that. You know, you had Poche on the ropes, kind of. He had not been pitching well. Um, only 12 of his 20 pitches were for strikes. Um, I, I, I would have stuck with Julian, not based off the splits, but just off of how Poche looked. And, you know, bringing out Stevenson, kind of give him a, a fresh arm, a new look out there. And he was sharp. He gets Christian Vasquez, and that ended the game. So, you know, that'll continue to be something to take a look at. I think especially since really the Twins, I don't want to say they don't have anything to play for, but they're, it's not like they're living and dying with every win. I think it would have been good to give Julian a shot there uh, just because, you know, it, it, it's not the end of the world if he doesn't deliver. Um, so those were the kind of the big picture thing was Jax is a big concern. I don't think Keiko's a major league pitcher anymore, to be honest. I'm sorry. It's been a good story, but um, I don't know what how much they can rely on him for anything. But the silver lining is Cleveland lost again. So the Twins still have a 7.5 game lead. Again, the resu- can't get too tied up in the results of these games right now. I want the Twins to win, but um, it, it almost doesn't matter. Moving over to St. Paul, whose games do matter right now quite a bit. They're trying to get into the playoffs, and Simeon Woods-Richardson is a guy who's been pitching great for them. Five innings, one run, five strikeouts. Over his last 12 outings, a 2.95 ERA, a 1.20 whip. This is a guy who's still only 22 years old for another uh, couple weeks here. Uh, so a lot, a lot of good, positive things going on with Simeon Woods-Richardson. And talking about guys who are on a roll, my goodness, Junior Severino did it again! Homer's in three straight games. He now has 10 home runs in 28 games for the Saints. 10 homers in 28 games since joining the Saints. <laughs> Nobody told him it's supposed to be harder when you move up a level. I guess. Uh, but he is now he's among the minor league leaders in home runs coming into today. The leaders had 34, so he's up there at 34 now. I didn't check in and see what any of these other guys did, but he is very much in the thick of it for minor league home run leader. Fortunately, the Saints lost, and they are now five games back of a playoff spot. Uh, so tough loss for them. Over to Wichita. Pearson Ohl has been such a pleasant surprise this season. There you see his tremendous numbers with Wichita. And this comes after he posted a 4.69 ERA with Cedar Rapids in 40 and a third innings. That was also his first time pitching in Cedar Rapids. So it's not as if he'd mastered that level prior to being promoted to double A. We've seen a lot of their pitchers struggle with that jump from Cedar Rapids to Wichita up to double A. And Pearson Ole, uh <laughs> hit a second gear. Um, you saw a 2.87 ERA coming into tonight. This is a guy who leads the minor league system in innings pitched this year. He's just been tremendous. Uh, 14th round pick back in 2021. He's added some velocity, but still his breaking pitches, his off-speed pitches are kind of his calling card, his command. Um, you, you know, Big situation you saw there. He had two on and no outs and got two strikeouts. There's another strikeout. Um, so kind of a guy who can kind of crank it up and hunt strikeouts but unfortunately he had a great start but Wichita lost tonight and this was coming into today 
They were a game back. They lose, and it looks like Springfield's going to win. So this might put, uh, and Wichita season ends this week, this might put their postseason hopes to bed. Going to be tough to come back from that. But here are the starting pitching lines from this evening. Both Woods Richardson and Ole had great outings. Severino with a two at night with that 34th home run of the season. Alex Isolov was three for four with three singles. Great night for him. Everybody loses by one. Everybody who played loses by one. We got a 5-4, a 4-3, and a 2-1. Counting us down there. Colonels back in action tomorrow in Game 2 of their playoff series. Thanks for watching this one. Really appreciate it. Thanks to all the channel members here, the premium members. We'll talk again soon.